So what is regulation then about if we need it to ensure this orderly progress? Well, it's about, and this is for the Business Administration Department, economics and creating an efficient market economy for telecommunication services. It's about creating a market framework and the basis for competition. It's about creating a legal and technical framework for providing services and networks. That's very important, and I'll come back to the issue about the legal framework. And finally, it's about developing and implementing the right policies, consultation processes, etc. In other words, it's an interactive process, and that's why I welcome the opportunity here today to speak and to get feedback from people. So here's the three elements. We call them the three pillars of regulation, economics, law, and engineering. It's very important that none of these dominate and that each of these mesh. There's no such thing as perfect regulation. Just the same way as no such thing as they say as a perfect storm. But what you're trying to achieve is a balance of these elements. And I hope by the end of my, of my discussion you'll see this. Now I've set out this thing. And in fact the person, the author of this slide is actually in the room. Do I? I'm still using this slide. <laughs> The purpose behind this one is to set out where we sit in the overall picture of things. First of all, we have the state of Qatar. And then we have an organization which is the Supreme Council, uh, ICT Qatar, uh, which is under a board chaired by the heir apparent. Um, and within ICT Qatar is the regulatory authority with legal powers, and that's my bit. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with Dr. Hesal Jabber, uh, who's our Secretary General who is the overall head of ICT Qatar. So all of these elements here that we, we for example, and the, these, the four ones I have across here are but examples, but of what I would say is subject areas within regulation. That's licensing, spectrum, numbering, and interconnect. The, we impose regulation in relation to these on the telecommunications industry, which in its turn provides services and network to customers, to the users of telecommunication services. But we're a listening body. We're not just a, a one-sided unilateral regulator when it comes to uh, regulation. We get feedback from the industry through consultation and review, and likewise from the users of telecommunication services. And we have had our first public consultations, and indeed, I may even have had some submissions from, from this place from people in, in the university and I would greatly welcome going forward and I will make sure um, that we inform the university um, that uh, next time we're holding a consultation any input from any source because it's very important that we get the, the broadest picture possible as a regulator that we don't go around thinking that we know everything ourselves that we're a listening regulator. So what are the objectives of our regulation? Uh, we set out here three main pillars uh, here. The first one is to foster an efficient telecom sector benefiting society. And among the benefits uh, that we're seeking under the first objective here is to develop telecommunications infrastructure, promote innovation in products and services, and that does include R&D, to improve the quality and efficiency of services, and to offer more choice and Madam President, the uh, lower prices to consumers. The second one is to create a, a showcase for successful um, sub sector reform um, within the state of Qatar. It's important. This, this is a showpiece because telecommunications is the kind of thing that, that attracts international attention. And among the things we're looking for here is to attract investment and efficient pra management practices to show commitment to open, fair, and competitive markets. It's very important, again, in order to attract investment to, to do that. And to al align with international practices, and not only international practices, but international best practices. And the final one, then, is to create a sustainable business environment within the sector. And that is to manage the impact of liberalization on all parties and to ensure a competitive but sustainable marketplace. I'll come back to this thing about sustainability. It's quite important because we may have taken some slightly different policy directions, for example, to Bahrain. And uh, I might do a compare and contrast later on in, in relation to that. You, you'll, you'll see where I'm getting at with the sustainable environment. 
Okay, I referred there to law being a pillar, and um, I picked up I picked up some nice brochures over there from the College of Law here. I have a daughter who's a who's a lawyer, and it's, she's qualified and working in Dublin now. Um, but um, law is fundamental because we have legal powers. So the, last year, the Emir signed a primary law. Uh, which gave ICT Qatar a range of powers, power to issue licenses, grant spectrum and numbers, regulate uh, uh, dominance. Uh, I'll come back to the competition issue later on um, because that is related to the whole issue of common, uh, of, and that is quite a common power. On, for example, throughout Europe, all regulators would have that power, and also the power to regulate prices. But we'll be adding to that. Um, there's currently an almost fully drafted bylaw. Uh, we're in communication with the DWAN, with the Cabinet Secretariat, on the finalization of that with their lawyers. And there will be further regulations on specific topics such as Spectrum and Interconnect. You'll be seeing those as the process rolls on. So in other words, you've got the basic law, which gives us the basic powers, and we'll be adding to that. Now, I've referred to licensing a few times, uh, and everybody talks about licenses. At the moment, the process we have for the mobile is we're not selling a company, we're actually selling a license. And licensing is the cornerstone of regulation. Um, now, in some markets, for example, within Europe, they've gone past licensing because they've totally liberalized the markets. And people can just set up business without, with just an authorization or self-declared themselves. But I think we have to go through various stages before, before we can reach that. Basically, a license is permission to provide services and network. It's no more, no less than that. Licenses are quite long documents, though. They're not like simple licenses, like a driving license, which is a single page document. Um, some of the licenses we've issued, if you look at them on our website, can be up to 60 pages long. Because they set out the obligations on the service and the network. They have annexures about quality of service and about areas of operation, etc. The same provisions are set out for all suppliers, but there might be additional obligations and dominant operators. This one's quite important, that the licenses are symmetrical. In other words, that if you're going to create a competitive market, that everybody's operating under the same type of license. But you might have uh, different circumstances for different operators, particularly in the context of dominance. I mentioned about competition powers. Yeah, is, am I correct in saying the, the Arabic word for competition is, if I mispronounce it, munafisa? Munafisa. Now, munafisa in competition law means a, a competitive environment. Like, that's, that's what we're talking about. It's not a competition in which there's a winner. It's a, it's a competition in which you, you try to achieve a level of balance. So that, that's what we're aiming at. So we're aiming to provide the basis for a competitive market for all parties. There is this common dominance and designation, and dominance designation. The reason why you have this is that it is generally accepted that some parties have so much market power that the normal rules of competition can't apply and that you have to have extra rules. And therefore, for example, a dominant operator might have, uh, let's say, conditions in relation to access to its network because it owns practically 80% or 100% of its network. We have uh, published proposals in relation to dominance, and QTEL have commented on them, and we had some other comments from some other parties, and we'll be finalizing this fairly shortly. It's not something for operators to be afraid of. It's common, again, it's, it's right throughout Europe. It's, 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 a common, it's, it's a common thing. And normally when you declare dominance, uh, you're, you're declaring them to be dominant in a particular market, so that over time, for example, as the markets develop, QTEL might be dominant in some markets but not in others as competition takes hold. It, it, this again is a common feature. So there are obligations and dominant operators such as the ones I've mentioned already about access and interconnect obligations and for example retail and wholesale pricing measures. I'll come on to the vexed area of interconnect later but basically within the uh, telecoms industry there's a lot of buying off each other. There's a lot of wholesaling. There's a lot of for example, uh, operator two might want to buy certain services or certain access off QTEL. And if QTEL is dominant, then it, it can control the prices. So that's, that's the real reason for this. There's also powers to prevent abuse, such as fixing of prices and discrimination against other parties. Uh, I won't dwell on those. We're hoping that these won't even happen here, but we have the powers to deal with them. 
And finally, there is merger control. That is, if two entities want to form one entity, in other words, if two companies want to come together then uh, within the telecommunications area, then ICT would have to approve it. And we would look at that from the, in the context of whether or not there would be an SLC, a significant lessening of competition. That is the normal rule that's applied. Now we're on to Professor Mazin's favorite subject, spectrum. <laughs> uh, 